All right, uh, let's see. So I got some crystals to play with. Uh, let's see, what did I get? I got a 36 megahertz, that's for this radio. Uh, I got a 1.8, so another one of these, 1.8 uh, 432, figure I couldn't have too many of those. Um, got two of those. And then I got uh, two 4 megahertz. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull this crystal out and put a socket on there so I can change uh, change crystal types or uh, uh, oscillator types. Um, the the 1.8432, that can stay put. Uh, that will never change. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm heating up my desoldering tool and we'll uh, uh, put on some kind of socket here and see if that uh, 4 megahertz makes this thing run. Uh, easy. Uh, so this is the six megahertz. Here's four megahertz. And I could put in some single pins or I could put in a an eight pin and just cut two of the pins. Uh, see if I can find some single pins. Alright, I found some single pins. Um, I put them on the legs of the part here so that I can hold them while I uh, while I insert the part in the board and then I'll uh, I'll solder it down. Okay, there we go, we're all installed. Uh, let's find five volts and uh, apply that. Get our uh, get our logic probe out. Why not? That was fun. Five volts here. Ground. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at the crystal oscillator. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. I can kind of reach underneath, grab the leg. Uh, can you see that? Uh, you can barely see that. So it's flashing. So the oscillator is running. Now we can check to see if we have uh, data here. Oh, it's still floating. That is odd. Well, I don't think that fixed the problem. Don't know why that's floating. I could have sworn that would have fixed it. So now we have four megahertz. Um, still not getting any. Oh, wait a minute. Something happened. Maybe I was just touching something. Let me, let me do a power on reset. Let's see if that does anything. Uh, I don't see anything. Power and reset over here. Oh, that one did pulse. I saw that one pulse. So maybe port B is where the cyanide message comes out of. Let's put this on a scope. So take a look what's going on. Well, once again, I'm stumped. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, this chip seems to be acting funny. I don't know. Some of the some of the pins are tri-stated, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't I don't even know why you would have a part that would allow those pins to tri-state. So I can only assume that this part might be bad, maybe due to overclocking. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, but maybe I just have a bad part. Um, I did buy it off of eBay from some shady seller, probably. So who knows? It might have been pulled out of a piece of equipment and not been very good, or 
There still might be something funny going on, but uh, all roads lead to this part being strange, or at least not getting programmed. Uh, that could be also could not might not be getting the correct signals and not configuring those pins as outputs. But that for an old part like this, that just doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems like the outputs of these are not working right. Anyway, I'll see if I can't find a uh, a part. Uh, I'll try to get a six megahertz part next time to let the board run at six megahertz. Uh, I did take the uh, 8255 chip out just to make sure that it wasn't slow and loading down the bus either. Um, I'll check the speed of that, but uh, I don't think it's required for anything uh, like to run Microsoft or uh, Tiny Basic. I don't think you need to be able to talk to output pins. I think this is just kind of a, a convenient circuit to add for future future uh, bit banging. Um, but anyway, uh, once again at wit's end.